Talking all things Auburn Tigers football, specifically spring practice as A-Day nears our good friend Zach Blackerby. He does all things with Locked on Auburn, also with AuburnDaily.com. Zach, what's going on, man? Appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, man. Happy, uh, happy April to you. Yeah, absolutely. April Fools, by the way. I don't know if you saw, but I may have scared some folks. Uh, that are fans of the Auburn Tigers with the Nick Saban post we had. So didn't mean to ruffle any feathers or get anybody worked up, but don't worry, Nick Saban's not coming back anybody, anytime soon. I don't think, at least. Um, either way, Zach, again, appreciate you taking the time, man. Like I said, really, really excited. We're coming into a huge year, two for Hugh Freeze. Let me start there, because obviously spring practice is in full swing. We're talking the week of A-Day, which is going to take place this weekend. I know it's really exciting, obviously, with these spring games to see your team get back on the field. What was the mood, in your opinion, coming into spring football? Because last year, year one of Hugh Freeze, I think you come into it with realistic expectations, right? Getting to postseason play was going to be an acceptable season, we'll say, in year one. I don't know about success being the right word, but an acceptable season. You had the highs of nearly taking down a Georgia and Alabama. You had the lows of the New Mexico State game and the bowl game against Maryland. Like, What was the mood, do you feel, coming into the second spring ball of the Hugh Freeze era? Yeah, are they better than they were a year ago? Is the roster better? Are they better coached? Is the situation as a whole better than it was a year ago? And I think the answer to that is yes. And of course, depending on you know the Auburn fan that you may ask, like, are you happy with where things are? That probably varies on how quick you want to see Auburn football get back to where it can be. And look, I think Hugh Freeze has got to do that. The issue is like patience is going to be needed because he's doing it the quote unquote right way, or at least I think it's the right way. And it's recruiting from high school. It's not just going out and getting a bunch of band-aids via the transfer portal to kind of get this immediate quick fix. He's trying to build a program and you got to do that from the high school level. And so we've seen him now. It's first full class is one of the best classes Auburn's ever had, at least on paper. And we're starting to see it now on the field with a lot of these true freshmen kind of making a splash early. So to me, I think Auburn is more talented than a year ago, which is kind of what you're looking at to answer your question going into Auburn's second spring under Hugh Freeze. It's just how quickly can they pull it all together? You know, I think, Zach, a lot was made of the offseason turnover when it comes to the coaching staff. Obviously, Auburn with a huge splash late in that, hiring DJ Durkin. Uh, what's that been like from what you've seen, what you've heard, the pieces coming together? Also, by the way, Hugh Freeze is now calling the shots and calling the plays, which I think most folks would agree was a great move by him to take over and take over the reins, if you will. But how do you feel like that's come together? Has there been anything out of camp that you've heard positive signs of you know, this coaching staff being much improved, we'll say, from a year ago? Yeah, you talk to some of these defensive players and you say, tell me about DJ Durkin. And there's been several of them that have told me one-on-one -on -one that says he's exactly what we needed. Sounds like intensity was something that was lacking on the defensive side of the ball. And look, we all love, you know, focused, you know, very straight edged players, but on defense, you want those guys, you want to come in like a shotgun. You want the energy, you want the passion. And I think Auburn has those guys, but I love Ron Roberts' scheme from a year ago, but I don't think he really got that out of some of these top defenders. I think DJ Durkin will. I think he will. And so we'll obviously see what the differences are. It sounds like terminology shift has been a big focus point over the course of spring. And so that may take you a little bit longer to kind of acclimate and adjust to this new defense as far as communication from the coaching staff to the players. I think that's something they're working on. And then I think you could say the same for the offense, despite it being the second year of Hugh Freeze's offense, sounds like a lot of the terminology on that side of the ball is changing too. But you're hearing similar things when you ask offensive players about new offensive coordinator Derek Nix. And so I think these two hires make a ton of sense, both for different reasons. Nix is a guy that worked with Freeze previously. They can finish each other's sentences. And it, he's the number two guy. I mean, Hugh Freeze is the OC, right? He's the head coach, but he's also the OC. And I think Nix is going to be a huge, huge supporter in what he does. I think that makes sense. Then on the other side of the ball, you go out and get a DJ Durkin, former head coach, a guy who can kind of be the head coach of the defense. You see that so often now throughout all of college football. So I think they both make a ton of sense, and it seems like the players are all in as far as – 
doing what they want to do and listen to what they have to say. Zach, let's go to the quarterback position, talking Peyton Thorne. I know it was sure. – it was uh, there were some mixed feelings about Hugh Freeze maybe not going out in the transfer portal and landing another quarterback to really compete with and maybe take over the job after last year, some ups and downs, some inconsistencies. And I know it's really tough in spring because, you know, these guys are going against each other. Like, you, it's really hard to draw any 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 conclusions, if you will. Yeah. But, from, again, what you've heard, what you've spring got, or heard and saw, guys you've talked to – are there positive signs that Peyton Thorne is taking that next step and is going to be the guy that Auburn needs him to be this season? Yeah, so whenever I talk about Peyton Thorne, it's very polarizing. He is a very polarizing figure, and it seems like that's been the case over the last 10 years, whoever Auburn's quarterback is. So let me add the caveat. I'm going to say nice things about Peyton Thorne. I do not think he is a great SEC quarterback when I'm saying all of these things. But as far as comparing him to a year ago, well, he wasn't at Auburn a year ago. And I think going through spring is going to be huge. I do think, you know, adding a new offensive, you know, scheme and a new offensive playbook, I do think that slows down some potential momentum there. But I've said this on my show, Locked on Auburn, a ton. Hugh Freeze and this Auburn coaching staff have made changes and adjusted the variables as much as they could to where it's easier to play quarterback at Auburn this year than it was Last year, I think the scheme is going to be more quarterback friendly talking to folks about the old OC. Like uh, there were times where they ran onto the field and folks said that they didn't know what they were running, which makes sense. Cause it, I always looked confused out there. <laughs> several delay of games, several like unneeded use of, of timeouts. So like, that makes sense. That certainly passes the eye test to be true, but I think the receiver room is better. I think the offensive line is better. I think the running backs, you bring them all back. So I think just by default, they're going to be better, or at least as good, which you feel super great about. And I think the scheme's going to make more sense because Hugh Freeze is making sure that that is the case. And I just, I don't think the scheme a year ago really made a ton of sense. And look, I think Coach Montgomery could be a good coach. I think he is a good coach. I just don't think it was a good fit at Auburn. So, you know, hopefully it works out for him the rest of his career. But as far as Peyton Thorne goes, there are several like, you can lay the path to where it's like, okay, this could happen and he looks better. Because I don't think Peyton Thorne has to be great for Auburn to be successful in 2024. But the receivers are better. Like I said, he's coming back. He's got a full off season now where he gets to know he's the quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. He doesn't have to worry about the transfer portal. He doesn't have to go through spring somewhere and then start somewhere else a few months later. I think there's a lot of factors that you can say, yes, Peyton Thorne can be better. And look, I talked to folks. Auburn had their scrimmage this past Saturday, and it sounds like there's a big divide between him, and then it seems like Hank Brown is the number two quarterback, then it's Holden Gurner, then it's Walker White. And it seems like Peyton Thorne is clearly the best quarterback on Auburn's roster right now. Does that mean he is a great quarterback? No, it does not. But I do think he can be better than a year ago. And look, you said at the top of this conversation, Auburn was close a ton last year. They just couldn't finish. They couldn't close out. And if you're just a little bit better on third down or you're a little bit better at sustaining drives throughout the game, which I think Peyton Thorne will be, Auburn wins two more games than they did a year ago. Now, Zach, as you look ahead and you, you talk returners, you talk newcomers, obviously 65%, that is the returning production from Bill Connolly's SP Plus rankings for the 2024 season. So there's a lot of new faces. Hugh Freeze with a really successful signing class. Cam Coleman is the name I continue to hear over and over and over again. Yeah. Talk about his game and then some of maybe the other newcomers, whether they're true freshmen or they're transfer portal guys that have caught your eye, that have shined, that maybe have made a name for themselves this spring going into summer. Yeah, the wide receiver room is a huge question mark with this team. I think it's one of the two largest question marks for this roster. But Cam Coleman is not a question mark. Cam Coleman is special. He is so special. And it's not just one of those things where it's like, yeah, we're excited about this new guy. Maybe we'll see him in two years. Cam Coleman could be one of the best players on this team. He is the best wide receiver on this team as an 18-year-old. He is special. There's something different about him. And he seems to be getting better every practice. Early on in spring, it sounded like, you know, he was running the wrong routes or didn't fully understand the patterns, which is normal, right? I mean, he's, he's an early enrollee. He's been a college athlete for five minutes. But just the jumps that this guy is having based off of the people that I'm talking to week by week by week, it's astounding. 
it's astounding. And I can't wait for folks to kind of see him at a day. You got to have the, you just got to think that they're going to have some stuff drawn up for him to kind of show off a little cam Coleman. Also, as far as the wide receivers go, I think this guy could be the number two receiver as far as newcomers go. And that's Robert Lewis, the former Georgia state wide receiver was super effective at that level of football. Can he make that transition from a G5 conference to the SEC. I don't think he's going to be asked to do as much, but he is the most, uh, he's the most decorated receiver in this room right now as far as production because that bar is a lot lower than Auburn would want it to be. So was primarily an outside guy. He's being now asked to pretty much be exclusively a slot guy. So Robert Lewis yeah. is a name to watch. And then not a newcomer, but was a newcomer a year ago. And, and I think he's probably not being talked about enough as far as Auburn receivers go. But I think Caleb Burton is primed to have a really solid season. Former Ohio State guy, transferred late, kind of saw his role increase over the course of the season once he kind of got acclimated and used to the system. He could be that starting outside receiver opposite Cam Coleman when it's all said and done. Zach, you mentioned A-Day, so let's talk about that again. We sit just a couple days away. And like, like I said, the spring game is one of those things I, I've joked many times that sometimes it feels like the hype sort of outweighs. Like once we get to the game itself, you realize, yeah. oh, yeah, it's just a glorified scrimmage. But there's still a lot you can take away and you can learn. It's a, It gives fans an opportunity, obviously, to get in the stadium, gives us a chance to watch these teams and get a first glimpse, especially get new guys when you talk a day, what are you most excited about? What are you most looking forward to? And outside of the obvious, which is getting out unscathed, nobody gets hurt. What do you want to see Auburn accomplish from a day on Saturday? I don't know how much Auburn can actually accomplish. I mean, you want to see, you want to see the receivers catch the football. I don't think it matters if it's a game or practice. You always want to see the receivers catch the football. And that's been something that has plagued Auburn's receiving core the last half decade or so, maybe longer than that. So I think that's something. Like, can they get the little things right? I don't think this team got the little things right a year ago, and that's something that this coaching staff really, really wants to push. So I, I think little things like catching the football, communication, getting the play ran on time, you know, no fumbles, things like that. And then another thing that that, that I'm interested in is like the thing that matters most to me in these spring games is the order in which guys – go in. We get our true like snapshot of what a depth chart could look like because they're just not going to hand out depth charts in spring, which is fine. I, I don't think we're privy. Like we deserve that information, but they've got to go. They've got to throw guys out there in a specific order. So like there's a lot of dudes in Auburn's defensive backfield that can play safety and nickel or nickel and corner or corner and safety. There's a lot of versatile guys in the defensive backfield. And so we get some of those questions answered. Also, like, who's who's the first and second linebacker that's coming in? We all assume Eugene Asante will be that first guy, but it's the next guy, Austin Keys, who played for DJ Durkin back at Ole Miss, which is kind of a fun connection. Or is it um, Dory Mausi, who's a transfer linebacker from Duke that I keep hearing good things about. So kind of getting to see a pecking order, an unofficial pecking order as far as guys going in. That, to me, is the most interesting thing about Ada. And Zach, on a side note, speaking of A Day, I believe I read somewhere there's an insider all access show coming as well to, with with Auburn Spring Football. Is that still happening, or is that just a rumor that was taking place? Yeah, I don't know. I don't okay. know anything about that, but I, I do know they're doing a lot of stuff content wise in regards to folks that are giving to the collective onto Victory. Like I know they're doing like some um, some meet and greets and stuff for the players before A Day. If you're an onto Victory donor, so. Uh, I'm sure they're doing a lot of stuff like every other, every other college football program right now. It's like, if you, uh, if you want the insider stuff from the school, you got to be given to the school. <laughs> Zach, appreciate you taking the time, man. Last thing we we'll get you out of here. When, when you talk spring ball again, we just got a couple of days left. Biggest takeaway, biggest surprise. Like what, what's the thing? Has there been anything that stood out to you most above all else when it comes to Auburn spring football, 2024? I'll give you one good and one bad. How about that? I mean, I, I'm going to circle back to Cam mm. Coleman. I, I was skeptical, like, how quickly could he transition to the college game? I think he's it, man. I think he is. I think he will be the best Auburn receiver ever when it's all said and done. And I think he hits the ground running as a true freshman. Uh, and, and I think we'll see glimpses of it in a day. I just think he's got some. If you watch him for five, six, seven plays in a row, like, something's going to happen. I think he's that level of a player. 
The negative, I'll go with the defensive line. I think this is a, this is a group where it's like you feel good about Jalen McLeod. You feel good about Keldrick Falk. If something happens to one of those guys, I really think this entire team is in trouble. And so to me, that's going to be the position to watch over the course of uh, this transfer window that opens later this month is defensive line. And so obviously that's going to be a position group I'm watching this Saturday day. There you have it. Zach Blackerby of Locked on Auburn, also of AuburnDaily.com, does a great job of covering all things Auburn Tigers. Zach, let folks know, by the way, where they can find you on social media, where they can find your work in case they're unfamiliar. Yeah, at Z Blackerby on all the, the relevant social media platforms. And like you said, Locked on Auburn available every day on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts and all the written stuff's at AuburnDaily.com. Zach, appreciate you taking the time, man. Let's definitely do it again soon. Yeah, let me know when. 